Welcome traders to another Tickmill Weekly Market Outlook for week commencing the 3rd of October with me Patrick Munley. So with the third quarter in the books now we head into the business end of the year the fourth quarter and uh, let's take a look at the data slate in the US. Start the week with manufacturing PMIs released on Monday. Final estimate looking for a 51.8 print there. Uh, we also get August construction spending, looking for an improvement there from the negative 0.4% print last time out. We're now looking for, or market consensus I should say, is a negative 0.1% print. Uh, Near-term weakening in demand continues to weigh on construction. We will also get ISM manufacturing, uh, 52.4 expected, manufacturing growth gradually slowing but risk of demand easing further. And we will hear from Fed speakers Bostick and Williams heading into Tuesday, August factory orders. I'm looking for an improvement there from the negative 1% print last time. Looking for a positive 0.2% print. We also get durable goods. I'm looking for a positive print there versus the zero point, uh, minus 0.2% print last time out. Drag on capital investment should extend really into Q3. We will also get August Jolt's job openings. Uh, job opening off peak, but still very strong. We also hear it from Fed speakers Logan, Williams, Mester, Jefferson, and Daly. Then heading into Wednesday, August trade balance, uh, looking for a negative 67.9 billion print there. Decline in domestic demand should continue to weigh on imports. We will get services PMI uh, 49.2 last time out. Uh, S&P Global uh, Services PMI is materially weaker than the ISM prints, uh, pointing to clear downside risks for both the services and the manufacturing sector. Manufacturing print looking for a 56.5, and we will hear again from Fed Speaker Bostick. Then heading into Thursday, see initial jobless claims, um, 193,000 last time out, and they're likely to remain at these low levels for the time being. Uh, Fed speakers Evans and Cook are on deck and then heading into Friday the all-important September non-farm payrolls. Last time we got a 315,000 print looking for a 250k print this time out. Uh, September unemployment rate to remain at 3.7% average hourly earnings percentage month over month 0.3% uh, payrolls are at odds with many other indicators, economic indicators, but uh, the unemployment rate is uh, likely to remain unchanged in the near term, putting off the next leg to uh, the downside in terms of wage growth. And then rounding out the week, we get August wholesale inventories. Uh, it's an uncertain time for retailers and those that supply them. So uh, pay close attention to that inv inventory print last time out, 1.3%. And then we get August consumer credit. Uh, high rates are likely to weigh over the coming year, so we're looking for uh, an improvement from the 23.811 up to 25 this time out. And then finishing up the week with speakers Waller, Mester and Williams. So turning to the charts and the technical setup. On the weekly time frame last week, we talked about this uh, major trend channel resistance. We got a test through there, spike through, but interesting close. We closed back below that trend channel resistance and below the 161 extension from this uh, previous decline. So we finished the week on a bearish note, uh, closing below that uh, 113 level, testing back towards 112. So as we head into this week, what I'm looking for is a three-way corrective move to develop, anticipate some support developing into the 111 handle, and then we're looking for a corrective move back into uh, test that 113 as resistance. As that holds, we look for a move down then, to test into the ascending trend line support uh, coming in around 10860s. At this stage, it would take a close back through those prior highs, uh, 11460s, to open a test of 115 as the next upside objective, and then on towards uh, 11850. But at the moment, I'm looking for a correction to play out in, uh, in the dollar index. Heading to uh, the Eurozone uh, data. On Monday, markets are closed in Germany for reunification day, uh, but we will get the manufacturing PMIs, final estimate 48.5, then heading into Wednesday, services PMI, final estimate 48.9, and uh, we also get August retail sales on Thursday, negative so far this year, highlighting the pressure on households. We'll also uh, get those all-important ECB minutes, and uh, they'll be 
uh, poured over looking for any indication with respect to the outlook for the rates environment in the Eurozone. And that rounds out the data slate next week in, uh, in the Eurozone. So from a technical perspective, the Euro uh, tested back down into this, the 2022 trend channel support, found some decent demand, a nice outside day reversal uh, on Wednesday, and then we got follow through on Thursday and Friday. Uh, testing up into the pivot area. So looking now for any pullbacks to find support into the uh, 97 area for a minimum three-way corrective move to challenge trend channel resistance just below uh, the parity level. That's going to be key decision point. We'll sell a setback in and take us down again. Or can we get a close through the trend channel resistance to suggest a, a broader corrective move is in play? Heading to the UK markets and uh, in terms of data next week, start the week Monday, manufacturing PMI 48.5, final estimate, and then into Wednesday, services PMI 49.2, final estimate. And there, so that actually rounds out the data uh, in terms of the UK next week. Would note it is the Conservative uh, Party conference starts, uh, started over the weekend and uh, will be running into the week. And uh, markets will be paying close attention to any comments from new Prime Minister Liz Truss and specifically uh, Chancellor Kwasi Kwarteng after the pretty torrid response from markets with respect to their mini budget and uh, and how that has been handled. So from a technical perspective, in terms of the uh, sterling dollar, I've traded into the corrective target zone here, 11070s to 112.50. Watch for bearish reversal patterns here. If that sets up, still look for that parity level to uh, to be pressured on the downside. However, if we get a close back through 114.16, then we look to the trend line resistance at w just below 118. Any close through there and this uh, this weekly reversal that we got in terms of uh, almost a thousand pips uh, in reversal there last week, given the fact we have this. Uh, momentum divergence in play could portend a more significant corrective move, but we'll have to see these key levels cleared first before we start to think about uh, the upside objectives with respect to sterling dollar. Dollar yen, in terms of Japanese data, we start the week on Monday. Uh, Q3 Tankan, large manufacturing index. Last time we got a nine print looking for an 11, reopening support limited by volatile supply conditions. We also get the manufacturing PMI, 51 uh, print there, final estimate. And then into Wednesday, we get the services PMI, 51.9, final estimate. And we round out the week on Friday with August household spending, looking for an improvement there from 3.4% last time to 7.2% this time, the reopening rebound underway, but virus risks do remain. From a technical perspective, the dollar yen looks set to test its major trend channel resistance. It's a quality objective. I'm going to zoom out here so you can see exactly what I'm talking about. This is an interesting setup, I think, in the dollar yen developing. Uh, so I'm looking for an extension up into the 147, uh, 149 area and uh, bearish reversal patterns there as long as we maintain this um, momentum divergence, bearish momentum divergence. We're going to be looking at uh, opportunities to fade this uh, push in terms of the dollar yen. Obviously, we still have the BOJ on the sidelines talking about intervention, and they don't want to. Uh, they don't want to see this market rising too rapidly. So I'm looking for any push up into this area to engage on the short side. Looking for a corrective move, and certainly thinking about an initial target back down into that 140 area, and potentially into the high volume node and the sending trend line support 135. But this is going to be a key test for the dollar yen, and one I'm going to be paying close attention to. This week, heading down under in Australia, markets are closed on Monday for public holidays. Uh, daylight saving time starts October the 2nd, clocks have gone forward by an hour. In terms of data, uh, inflation gauge, percent year over year, 4.9%, inflation well above the RBA's target band, obviously. Then heading into Tuesday, we get the RBA policy decision, 2.35%. Uh, uh, is the current rate. Markets anticipate another 50 basis points being added uh, to that. Lifting rates to the hold side of neutral is uh, is the market view there. And then on Thursday, we get August trade balance, uh, looking for a 10.1 billion versus a 8.7 billion print last time out. Coal export shipments have recovered from the July floods. And then we round out the week on Friday with the RBA financial stability review, half yearly updates, and markets will be paying attention 
to that. From a technical perspective, uh, Aussie dollar continues to trade on the weak side. I'm looking now for a break through the 63.60, set up a test down into projected sending trend line support into the 62 area. Um, and from there, then I'd be looking for a corrective bounce to develop as long as we can maintain some momentum divergence here. Obviously broken down on Friday, but we will be looking for a hold here into uh, this lower prices, the 62 handle. And from there, we'll be looking to play another corrective move to the upside. Running out the week with a quick look at the weekend risk barometer, Bitcoin. And uh, we are continuing to trade in this holding pattern. A potential wave for high in place at 25,170s. We're looking for a final extension down into our target. Our equality objective versus this major string structure here, ABC, gives us 12,185. So any breakthrough and a close on a daily basis through that 17,760, I want to be adding to short positions, targeting that 12,000. 185. And that concludes the weekly market outlook for week commencing the 3rd of October. As always, traders plan the trade, trade the plan, and most importantly, manage your risk. Until next time, thanks very much.